This is the Makita uh, corded, uh, corded chainsaw. Uh, we're bouncing back and forth on whether or not to get another cordless. Try to find one that's really got some staying power. Uh, the organ power now is a, is a really good saw, but the batteries are expensive. And you really got to go own three batteries to keep it in business. And what we figured out is that we can, we're, we're, we're getting one of these for the evaluation to see how well it holds up. Because a lot of the lumber processing we're going to do, uh, you know, with gas powered saws, but this is medium where you're dealing with the treetops where the stuff is, it's really too small and too springy to want to deal with a high powered. You know, if you've got a high powered, high horsepower saw, and, and a woman or even one of the men who's been bucking all this stuff up is, is dealing with it and they're a little fatigued and that shit's really springy, you uh, it, it can throw that giant blade right back at you with that spinning chain and that high horsepower and cause some really horrible injuries. Uh, and so when you get down to the limbing stuff, you, you know, you want to use loppers and you want to use a smaller chainsaw. Uh, I'm not saying you want to use a weak chainsaw, but, you know, not something with that major horsepower. Because with these big saws, once you get that, once you get that chain down into a log, you're pretty safe, okay? It, 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 you get that chain down into a log and you're sitting there and you're holding the trigger and it's cutting a thing, you know. You can relax a little bit. When you're limbing, that shit can spring back at you. It can be under tension. You want a lightweight, handy saw, and even with the cordless saws, a lot of times you've got that battery adding weight, and and sometimes they're just they're not strong enough to do that sustained. And so we got one of these Makitas. It's the highest rated, definitely not the cheapest, of the corded uh, of the electric chainsaws. And there's no cordless saw that's going to put 15 amps of of motor to drive a chain. So. Some of these on the, on the advertising listings will say 14.5 amps, some will say 15 amps. This particular one really kind of gives me the impression that it's using the motor from one of their worm drive saws. And interesting, 14.5 amps, uh, and then there's something here that says 13.8. So, you know, maybe it's not an exact science, it has to do with, you know, little changes in how they wind the saws. Now, we're not using fuel with this saw, but remember, you still need to oil the chain, just like on the cordless saws. You still have a chain oiling situation, so we're not talking about petroleum-free wood processing. And uh, although I've met Cody, Wrangler Star, at one of the uh, Survival Expos, hey, he's a chainsaw user too, okay? And uh, he does a lot with, with buck saws and cross cuts and all that kind of stuff. But when you get a buck up a bunch of firewood and, and all that, you need to be, you need to be efficient with your time and the, and the available technology. So what you get in the box is obviously you get the motor head assembly itself. Uh, you're going to get a Makita chain bar. You're going to get an organ chain, and the organ chains are pretty much what come with all of your most of your commercial chainsaws sold in in, in the world today. It seems like you're going to have an organ chain. Uh, those guys are outside of Portland. Uh, they know how to make saw chains. And that's the way it is. So everything's going to come with an organ chain, but the chain lengths, uh, you know, what manufacturer specifications are, uh, they know the horsepower of their saw and the capabilities and what their opinion is on, on, you know, let's say tooth links with clearing links or maybe the onboard sharpening mechanism like with the organ power now saw. Uh, even though they're all organ chains, they're going to be a little different depending on what that company wants on their chain. So we'll pop this open we're going to get it together and show this uh, a little bit before we put it in action so we've got the side cover off it's a toolless removal and one of the things i noticed after i kind of got to unpack in the box there are no tools included with this so apparently it's a toolless setup so that basically you, it comes like this you flip this back you push the plunger in and that will activate your ability to loosen up on this thing once you get that off, see it's, a, it's kind of a nut arrangement here, and then uh, seems to be a floating bolt in that. Nice heavy duty, I don't know, it's magnesium or, or, or aluminum housing. Uh, it, it, you can tell you're dealing with quality equipment here. Uh, the band you'll see here is your chain brake mechanism, there's a clutch mechanism. And uh, orienting your teeth, you see how the, uh, the sharpness is at the bottom 
uh, the sharpness points to the back because the, the saw blade goes this way. Okay, uh, you've got real bucking bars. A lot of saws come with that not assembled. That that just comes already on there. It's a steel tooth barking, bucking bar. It looks like they're putting a, a tooth every other link, and not every second or uh, not every third link, like on the uh, the organ chain that comes with the Greenwood saw. So they they put a real real uh, cutting tooth every other link. That cuts in the opposite direction so that it will uh, give you a pretty wide cutting curve. On there. I believe that's what they call that. A nice heavy duty housing. I There's not a lot of space in here for crap to get out. So I uh, I don't know how it's going to be for stuff build up, but we'll find out. Uh, this little pin here is part of your chain tightness adjusting mechanism. So that when we put this on, we've got to make sure that that pin goes into one of these holes. Now, what happens is this bar can get worn. You can you can flip it around upside down and get a little more life out of it. But we've got to make sure, because I was playing with this thing when I was trying to get it off, we've got to make sure that that pin gets into that bar. So I'm going to be adjusting this thing back a little bit. You can see that moving. You gotta adjust that back so it gets into that uh, into that hole in the bar before we before we put everything on and, and tighten it down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around with this. You get it into the teeth. Um, I'm gonna play around a little bit with this. I gotta use both hands for it. So I get this installed. But the thing is, you see how that bottoms out. You gotta get it onto um, the lower one of these. And then we'll be adjusting it out for the tightness. Now, when a chain is new, it's just like a bicycle chain. You do a little tensioning, a little use, do a little retightening. Hey, out there, I need a head count of who's so What I did is you have to notch the back in and then rotate this thing down. And then this is how you do that. You know, it's almost like its own little socket head built onto there. Now, as soon as I get everything connected, I realize you got a shitload of slack in that chain, right? So we, we get it where it's not tight but firm. And then. Um, you'll notice that when I was getting this thing made it up, I had that, that chain tensioned all the way loose. Now, you can see a very slight amount of movement in that bar. That bar is moving outward as I make this adjustment. And we're going to kind of get to a point when it moves. You might want to wear gloves doing this. I've already cut myself, so I don't, you know, it's just not really that kind of an issue. So we don't want, you know, the, the thing will start to settle into its teeth back here, and the teeth up here, and the track. We want it to where you can't, if you pull on this, it doesn't expose that whole thing. The thing is that once it starts driving, once it's under power, it tends to tighten up a little more. We don't want it to be too tight. If it's too tight, see how that clumped it back in? And it wasn't very many turns. It was like maybe a quarter turn on this thing. It, Chainsaw bars are just like that, okay? And if we run them too tight, we wear them out quickly. And sometimes it over tightens as soon as you turn those things a little bit. So that's, eh, that's a little on the tight side. But the thing is, I think it's going to loosen up. It's brand new. So it's going to loosen up when I go to make my first couple cuts. So there we are, ready to, ready to go. Uh, Except, of course, I'm going to add some uh, chain bar oil to this. There's some arguments on whether or not you should use specialized chain and bar oil or regular old motor oil. Uh, I'm, I'm from the old motor oil school, but here's the thing that happens. There's special taxes and stuff on motor oil now that bar oil is often cheaper. Now, bar oil has a little bit of a paraffin-type material in it which will, it, it's stickier than motor oil, and so it will ch stay in there, because one of the things that happens when you get sawdust and crap around, a lot of times a little oil spouter thing that feeds oil to the bar as you're cutting, that gets clogged up. And it's less likely to clog up if you use regular motor oil, but once you're using regular bar lube, it, it, it can get a little thicker and it can clog up. And if you're like me, you just end up dumping some onto the bar every once in a while. When you get to the point where you're having to dump it on the bar every once in a while, you want to use a real chain and bar oil. So I'm going to get my bottle of regular bar oil. I'll put it on here. And uh, 
we'll see long term whether or not that clogs up the system. The reviews I've been reading on uh, online are that it doesn't doesn't have it seem to have that problem. Uh, one of the other things I was looking through the owner's manual on here, you have to look out for with any electric saw cord or cordless, which isn't that big of an issue with gas powered saws, is this thing should not be out in the rain. Okay, it shouldn't be leaving it out in the rain. Uh, so that's that's one of the one of the shortcomings of using this type of a saw. And what we're looking at though is over time we're saving money on fuel. And of course, this saw is going to be as powerful as its gasoline powered counterparts and more powerful than its cordless counterparts in the same size range. This one's got the 16 inch bar. They also have a very popular 14 inch bar version that's apparently very popular among the uh, log home builders for notching and trimming logs. They're lubed up, ready to go. And the other thing is, when one of these is brand new and it hasn't had any uh, oil on it for a while, it, is, it doesn't hurt to dump a little into this stuff, okay? The other thing is if you take some grease and grease this hole, but again, it's new. Um, Got to watch out, these teeth are pretty sharp, but I'll, I'll put oil on there. You know, I'll spooge a little extra on there just to, uh, because nothing's been going through its onboard lubrication system yet. And it's uh, break time. So we're going to put this on and I'll show you the cutting next. Go on. Okay, so here we've made a few test cuts before turning the camera on. Uh, we're plugged into inverter power on a 5kW inverter. Uh, again, we're loaded up. Might have to do a little more adjusting on the chain because it's a brand new chain. But in power testing this on uh, 4 to 6 inch stuff, I had no problem at all. And so decided to try and test this at a full 16 inches. Now you lose about an inch because of the bucking bar, but remember it's a steel bucking bar. The other thing we're noticing is you gotta let this thing, kind of like with some of the battery saws, you gotta let it get up to speed before you're gonna get full power. But once it's going, because of the size of the motor and the stuff in there, there's a little bit of a flywheel effect happening with that stuff. The other thing is, Controls are relatively ambidextrous, except for the safety button. So what I find myself doing is a left-handed user, and there's a lot of times you just got to switch hands when you're using a chainsaw because the way the brush is and the other stuff lays. I, I can't stand over there and do it right-handed. So with my index finger, I'm going to disengage the safety, kind of like with the, with the inside of the knuckle, and then I'm pulling the trigger with the middle finger maintaining positive control on a saw, but because it's a forward balance saw, um, you know, you can kind of hang on to it, but it's not like it's a sword either. So here we're going to show cutting it pretty close to the full length of the saw. I'd say this is about a 14, 15 inch log. Now you can see that, you know, maybe it's not like cutting with this steel gas full power saw, but as far as other plug-in saws, I wouldn't expect an electric to be able to make that cut that quickly. There's no, no camera tricks happening. Um, this thing really does have the power. In fact, in my earlier commentary, I'm talking about using this mainly for limbing, but, uh, you know, we can, we can dice up a log or a thick branch. And one of the things we notice in doing the evaluation, it's kind of a pleasant experience because hey, there isn't all the noise and smoke involved. And so, you know, 250, 350, depending on where you buy it and that sort of thing. I got this one on Amazon, I think at around 265. I paid a little extra for the faster shipping. And uh, of course, Amazon will nail you for sales tax in a lot of areas too now. So, you know, a little south of 300 bucks, it's pretty good for low noise, low impact. Again, we're not petroleum free on here. We're still using chain lube. And you can see the power this thing has. It's no joke, no punk. And there is not a cordless saw out there, including the very best one on the market, which I tested previously. 
Uh, there is not a cordless saw out there which, which is going to match the power you get out of this Makita saw. There may be some other electric saws that may come close, but as far as we've been able to tell, and the reason we did the evaluation on this, it's kind of one of those only game in town situations. All of the other electric saws are cheaper, the, the corded ones are cheaper for a reason. But remember, you've got to have a lot of power on tap. We're using super thick extension cords, a 5,000 watt inverter, or of course plug-in grid power with a 20 amp outlet when possible. Uh, so there it is, a Makita corded 16 inch 14.5 uh, amp saw.